1999, you joined Robert Bork in writing an amicus brief in support of Harold Freddie Rice, who challenged the voting structure for Hawaii's Office of Hawaiian Affairs, a state office charged with working for the betterment of Native yes, Hawaiians. Yes, sir. You argued that Hawaii could not limit those who voted for the office as trustees to only Native Hawaiians. You not only made this argument in a legal brief, but you also published an opinion piece in the Wall Street Journal under your own name entitled, quote, Are Hawaiians Indians? In the piece you wrote, the Native Hawaiian community was not indigenous because, as you said, after all, they came from Polynesia. It might interest you to know that Hawaii is part of Polynesia, so it's not that they came from Polynesia, they were part of Polynesia. Hawaii is part of Polynesia. Native Hawaiians did not come from Polynesia. Let me repeat that. They were part of Polynesia. You also implied that Native Hawaiians couldn't qualify as an Indian tribe and therefore were not entitled to constitutional protections given to indigenous Americans because, and I quote you, they don't have their own government. They don't have their own elected leaders. They don't have they don't live on reservations or in territorial enclaves. They don't even live together in Hawaii. Let me tell you why each of these assertions are wrong, but it is the basis on which you determine that the OHA elections were unconstitutional. Well, the, the Supreme, why Court, they are the Supreme so Court agreed, though. Uh, the Supreme Court agreed 7 uh, They did not agree based on necessarily your arguments. Let me go on. To say that there is no system of law is an insult to the society that evolved in the Hawaiian Islands over centuries, even before the creation of the United States. To say they don't have their own elected leaders in a historical sense just betrays, in my view, your ignorance of Native Hawaiians. They were a self-sustaining, self-governing society for a thousand years prior to the so-called discovery by Captain Cook. You said they don't live on reservations or in territorial enclaves. They don't even live together in Hawaii. You know, it's hard to know what to say to this assertion. It sounds like you're saying that native groups in the United States derive their rights from having been herded into reservations and cheated out of their land, or that they surrendered their rights when they move outside of these artificial boundaries. It is not only factually wrong, but also very offensive. Judge Kavanaugh, it is hard to believe that you spent any time researching the history of Native Hawaiians. Now, I'm going to refer to an email that you May I respond to that? sent Sorry. out. May I'm going to get to my question. OK. Thank you. You sent out an email on June 4, 2002, and I'm going to read in part. Any programs targeting Native Hawaiians as a group is subject to strict scrutiny and of questionable validity under the Constitution. Now, you sent out this email after the Rice decision had already been made by the Supreme Court. When you wrote this email saying that all Native Hawaiian programs should be uh, undergo strict scrutiny because there are constitutional, questionable validity under the Constitution, were you looking to Rice v. Cayetano as a basis for this view which you expressed in your email? So, Senator, uh, first of all, appreciate your perspective. The amicus brief I wrote uh, was, a, was the Supreme Court agreed with by a 7-2 decision written by Justice Kennedy uh, in that case, Rice versus Cayetano. Uh, and that decision uh, in, in the case, just so I'm clear, it was a state office that denied African Americans the ability to vote in that, for that state office, Latinos, and other people were denied the ability to vote for a state office. And the question was whether uh, that was permissible under the Constitution and the Supreme Court by 7 to yeah, 2. Yeah, uh, Judge uh, well, that was I, I, know, I attended that Supreme Court hearing. Mm -hmm. I did, And too. I believe that one of the reasons they kept asking about uh, trying to figure out whether Native Hawaiians constitute tribes is probably because of the amicus that you put in there that raise this issue, so let me go on. You know, you didn't answer my question as to whether or not when you said that any program targeting Native Hawaiians as a group is subject to strict scrutiny and of questionable validity under the Constitution, my question to you was, were you thinking about the Rice decision, which you continue to say, yes, they, they, the Supreme Court agree with you. Were you thinking about the Rice decision when you made this view No. Uh, that's an email uh, 16 years ago. I don't recall what I was thinking about when I wrote it. It was at, right after the Rice decision. This is a 2002 email. The Rice decision was 2000. Well, let me ask you this then. 
Do you think Rice v. Cayetano raises constitutional questions when Congress, not the state, because Rice was a state action case. It had to do with the 15th Amendment, not the 14th Amendment. The 15th to do, Amendment having to do with voting rights. So my question to you is, do you think Rice v. Cayetano raises constitutional questions when Congress passes laws to benefit Native Hawaiians? I think uh, Congress's power with, uh, with respect to an issue like that is substantial. I don't want to pre-commit to uh, any particular program, but I understand that Congress has substantial power with respect to uh, declaring, um, recognizing tribes. But and you believe that any of these kinds of programs or laws passed by Congress should undergo strict scrutiny and raises well, as I, as I sit here today as a judge, I would listen to arguments under the, that 16 years ago, uh, and I'm working in the, uh, in the administration and the executive branch and putting forth uh, the position there. But if I were a judge, I would listen to the arguments. To your question, Congress has substantial power uh, with respect to programs like this. I appreciate um, what you've said about Native Hawaiians. The specific case was about an election to a state office. Yes, that's why it's a state action case. I am well aware of the basis on which the Supreme Court made that decision. So, Judge Kavanaugh, Rice is often cited for the proposition that laws that benefit Native Hawaiians are unconstitutional because they are race-based. Do you think Rice can be cited for that view, knowing, as you have acknowledged, that it is a state action, 15th Amendment voting rights case? Rice, I know this, Rice is often cited for the proposition that all Native Hawaiian programs enacted by Congress are, can be challenged as unconstitutional as race-based. I'm asking you if that is an appropriate citation of the Rice decision. Senator, um, I, I think Congress has substantial power, of course, in this area that you're discussing. And uh, I would want to hear more about how Rice applies. I would want to hear the arguments on both sides. I would keep an open mind and appreciate your perspective on this question. You know, when the Supreme Court keeps an open mind and listens to the litigants and the advocates, one would hope that the advocates will actually pre uh, proffer facts to the court, and that is not what you did when you filed your amicus to the court. And I think you have a problem here. Your view is that Native Hawaiians don't deserve protections as indigenous people under the Constitution. And your argument raises a serious question about how you would rule on the constitutionality of programs benefiting Alaska Natives. I think that my colleagues from Alaska should be deeply troubled by your views. And I know that in your amicus brief and in your Wall Street article, you did not mention one word about Alaska Natives. And it could be because there is no Commerce Clause reference to Alaska Natives as there is for American Indian tribes.